Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayyul ahabati fillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in you and guide us in you Imam Muhammad rahmatullahi alayhi he said mentioning the dalil min al-sunnah meaning the evidence from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for Islam wa iman wal ihsan we already spoke about those different maratib of Islam and in general what they mean in the 14th lesson and here we've reached a portion of the treaties where the Imam said and mentioned the hadith of Jibreel Mashhur an Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu which is the hadith known as the hadith of Jibreel which is a very long hadith where Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal بينما نحن جلوس عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اطلع علينا رجل شديد بياد الثياب شديد سواع الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرف منا أحد حتى جلس للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كافيه على فاخره وقال يا محمد أخبرني الإسلام فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الإسلام انتشر إن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطاع إليه سبيل قال صدقت فأجبنا له يسأله ويصدقه عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه he said one day while we were sitting with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم there appeared before us a man whose clothes were exceedingly white and whose hair was exceedingly black no signs of travel were to be seen on him, and none of us knew him. He walked up and sat down by the Prophet wasallam, resting his knees against his and placing the palms of his hands on his thighs. And he said, O Muhammad, inform me about Islam. The Messenger of Allah wasallam, said, Islam is to testify that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is, his me and is the Messenger of Allah to perform the prayers, to pray the zakat, to fast the Ramadan, and to make the pilgrimage to the house if you are able to do so. He said, you have spoken rightly. And we were amazed at him asking him and saying that he had spoken rightly. فَقَالْ أَخْبِرْنِي عَنَ الْإِمَانِ قَالْ أَنْ تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِي وَكُتُوبِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخَرِ وَتُؤْمِنَ بِقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرْ and then he said, well, and tell me about Iman. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replied, it is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, and to believe in the divine destiny, both the good and the evil of that, and the evil of it. He said, then tell me about Ihsan. قال إن تعبد الله كأنك ترى فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. He said it is to worship Allah as though you are seeing Him, and while you don't see Him, know that He sees you. And then he said, أخبرني عن الساعة. أخبرني عن الساعة. Tell me about the hour. He wanted to know about the. The day of judgment. When is it going to come? The Prophet ﷺ replied, The one questioned about it knows no better than the questioner. And then he said, Then tell me about its signs. He ﷺ replied, That the slave girl will give birth to her mistress, and that you will see the barefooted, naked, destitute herdsmen competing and constructing lofty, lofty buildings. Then he took off and he stayed for some time. After that, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Umar, atadri man asail, O Umar, do you know who the questioner was? And I replied, meaning Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah wa rasulu a'lam, Allah and his messenger know best. He ﷺ said, He was Jibreel, who came to you to teach your religion. Ahabati fillah, that hadith has so many fawa'id and so many benefits, but this is not the time nor the place uh, to get into those uh, many, many fawa'id. 
But the Shahid here, as Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, he mentioned it for the purpose of illustrating the evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam regarding Islam and Iman and Ihsan, and that those are the levels of Islam, and that they have pillars, and that they form the basis of our religion. And that they are also, they make up the second fundamental, which is knowing the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. What is, what is the relevance of that? The relevance is, is that now Imam Muhammad ibn al Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala has made clear for us from the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the evidence for Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Because as we began the treaties, when he stated that knowledge is knowing Allah and knowing his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and knowing the religion of Islam with the textual proofs. So that is the portion, or that is the knowledge of Islam with the textual proofs. Then the third uh, principle, which is the last part of the, the principle, the last of the three principles, al-usul thalatha, the three principles, and this is ma'rufa to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa This is knowing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he said, because this, these are the things we'll be asked in our grave about who our prophet is, you know, who Allah is first and foremost, and who the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, who, who our prophet was, and what our religion was. So this third principle, he said, وَهُوَ Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Mut Ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim wa Hashim min al Quraysh wa Quraysh min al Arab wa Arab min Dariyat al Ismail ibn Ibrahim al Khalil alayhi wa ala nabiyyina afdal salatu wa salam. Wallahu min umri thalatha wa sittun sinna minha arbain kabla nabuwa wa thalatha wa ashroon nabiyyin rusulin nubiya biqara wa arsala bi madathir. وبلده مكة وحجر إلى مدينة وبعثه الله بالنظارة عن الشرك ويدعو إلى التوحيد. So he said, this third mentioned in the third principle of the ثلاثة أصول. He said, he is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. Hashim is a tribe from the Quraysh, and Quraysh is from the tribes of the Arabs. Arabs are descendants of Prophet Ismail. The son of Prophet Ibrahim, may peace be upon both of them. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, lived for 63 years, 40 of which were before prophethood, and 23 as a prophet and messenger. He was informed that he became a prophet with the verse which means read, meaning Surah Al Al Alaq, and that he became a messenger with the verse which means. O you enveloped in garments, arise and warn, meaning Suratul Mudathir. His home was Mecca, and Allah sent him to warn people against shirk and call them towards Islamic monotheism. Call them the Tawheed. And then he mentioned the evidence for this is a statement of Allah O you enveloped in garments, rise. Uh, arise and warn, magnify your Lord and purify your garments. Keep away from rujz and give not a thing in order to have more. And be patient for the sake of your Lord. Uh, and then he broke this down. He said the meaning of warn here is against shirk, meaning warning against shirk. And the call here is calling towards tawheed or monotheism. And then he said, magnifying your Lord means to glorify him by believing in his oneness, believing in Tawheed. Purifying your garments means purify your deeds from shirk. And then he said, he spent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 10 years calling people to this. And after these 10 years, the five daily prayers were made obligatory. He only prayed in Mecca for three years. The remaining period of his residence in Mecca, and after that, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was commanded to migrate to Medina. 
and the hijra, the migration, is to move from the land of infidelity to the land of Islam. It is compulsory upon all Muslims and will remain as an obligation until the day of resurrection. The evidence for this is a saying of Allah, which means, O oh, my slaves who believe, certainly spacious is my earth, therefore worship me. Imam Abagui said, Rahimallah ta'ala, this verse was revealed for the Muslims who remained in Mecca and did not migrate. Something very important, Ahabatifillah, with regards to the Hijra. Some of the tafsil, which is very important that we have an, an uh, understanding of, some of the details related to the Hijra that the ulama make clear is that the hujra, of course, it has different ahkam in the sharia, as many uh, acts of worship that, that and, and uh, mu'amalat have different ahkam, meaning that sometimes the hijra is wajib, it's an obligation. So the imam here is mentioning the obligatory hijra to leave uh, a disbelieving land, to live in a Muslim land, to reside in a believing land. And this becomes an obligation if you're unable to practice your religion in safety and security and showing the signs of Islam. Uh, the ulama make clear, or those ulama, some of the ulama that hold the view they bring the tafsil and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, and I believe that this is the most correct and practical, is that hijrah in that case is an obligation. But if you're able to practice your religion in, in lands without being harmed and able to show the signs of Allah subhanahu wa you know, to, to pray and, and, and so forth and practice your Islam, wear hijab, etc., then, like in the case of America, then it would be recommended. It's mustahab. It's better for you to make hijra, but it is not an obligation, meaning you're not necessarily sinful. You're not sinful for staying there in that situation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And the scholars differ with regards to this very in-depth masail, but we just want to get some sort of understanding pertinent to this risala. Then the Imam said, Rahmatullah, he said, he mentioned uh, the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, as Dawa Ali as Dalil for the Hijra, he said, In the Ladina to Afahum al Malaika to Vadimi and Fusihim and Fusihim. قالوا فيما كنتم قالوا كن مسترعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجر فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساعة مصي وساعة مصي ااا مأواهم جهنم وساعة مصيرة إلا الذي إلا المستعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان لا يستطيعون هيلة ولا يحتدون سبيلا فأولئك عصى الله أن أن يعف أن يعف عنهم وكان الله عفوا غفورا. So he mentioned the evidence from the Quran about the Hijra, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. About those who uh, he, 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 he mentioned, verily those who the malaika come to take their souls, have uh, oppressed themselves, uh, who have oppressed themselves. And they say to them, uh, what have you uh, done? And they will say, we were oppressed in the land. And they will say, wasn't Allah's earth spacious for, the, for you to make hijra or immigrate in it? Then verily, those will have a, uh, their destination will be Jahannam, will be the hellfire. And what an evil abode. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes istithna. He says, إِلَّا الْمُسْتَدْعَفِينَ مِرَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاءِ وَالْوِلْدَانِ He said, except those who are oppressed in the land from men and women and children and those who are unable to make the journey, to make hijrah and, and find no means to do so. Verily, Allah will pardon them and verily, Allah is the most forgiving and oft, oft uh, pardoning. And then he also mentioned the other ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibad al amanu inna ardi wa, uh, wasi'atun fa'iyaya fa'budun. O my slaves who believe, certainly spacious is my earth. Therefore, worship me. And Imam Baghawi commented on this. He said, this verse was revealed for the Muslims who remained in Mecca and did not uh, migrate. And then he mentioned from the Sunnah, Dalil ala hijra min sunnah The evidence for the hijra from the Sunnah. He mentioned the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, La tan kati al hijra tu the Prophet ﷺ said, Hijra will, not, uh, will never stop until repentance stops. And repentance will never stop until the sun rises from the west. Meaning that's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. And so Hijra and repentance is until that time. So, and this comes... Also, again, with the tafsil or the details that we've already previously mentioned. Uh, then he said, when the Prophet ﷺ settled in Medina, he conveyed the commands of zakat, hajj, fasting, jihad, the adhan, uh, enjoining amr bin maruf and ayin amunka, enjoining good and forbidding evil, and all the other Islamic rituals. He spent 10 years doing this, then he died, وسلم, but his religion, Islam, remains. And then he said, there is no good except that he has guided the Muslim nation to it. And there is no evil except that he warned the Muslim nation against it. The best of the goodness to which he guided them to was Tawheed. And the worst evil he warned them against was Shirk. Meaning Tawheed, as we already mentioned in the treaties, A'adhamma amr Allahu bihi a Tawheed wa a'adhamma naha anhu a Shirk. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from everything sinful and everything evil, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.